Watermarks are always a hot topic at all of our events. Um, one of the things that we love to do at the end of every Cowgirls and Cameras event is to hold a slideshow to show the models and the cowboys and cowgirls and the other photographers what happened from the different viewpoints of everyone who participated with a camera in the event. And we ask that these images be watermarked and it always kind of is a little bit of a difficulty for everyone. So I want to talk about watermarks in Lightroom today and how you can adjust them for both text watermarks, which are really quick and easy to make, and then also adding a graphical watermark to your Lightroom so that you can use your logo or another graphic image to be able to set up your watermark. Let's start with the easy one first, which is your um, text watermark. Now, before you begin, you're going to have to select a couple of images because the watermark dialogues are only available when we export images out of Lightroom. So let's just grab a couple of images here real quick. We're going to pick uh, a portrait and a landscape one. And I'm just going to right click on this and roll down here to export and then just grab export. So I want this whole dialogue box here. All right, I'm gonna go down here to where it says watermarks and I'm gonna click on watermark and you'll see that I have a watermark selected here. As a matter of fact, I generally have several watermarks. This just happens to be a newer version of Lightroom and it apparently has gotten rid of a lot of the older ones. I will say Lightroom's versions have gotten a lot better about keeping your watermarks version to version versus you having to go in here and re-input them every single time. But we're gonna come down here to edit watermarks and um, that is gonna bring up the watermark editor. So one of the things I think that fools with people is that there's really no menu option to get here. You have to get here through the screen. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to take a look as to whether we want this to be a text watermark or a graphic watermark. Now we're gonna come back and visit the graphic ones in a minute. We're just gonna go ahead and grab text for right now. And as you can see, it just picks Adobe Clean regular style and sticks a watermark at the bottom of the image. Now, for some things that will work and you're just good to go and you can click save and head on. But sometimes you want to adjust that. Maybe you want to use a different font. So let's go ahead and pick Garamond Pro. And maybe I want my website instead of just my name. Photography com. Okay, and you can see that kind of went off the edge of this image. And by the way, I can use this little front and back over here to see that it would look fine on a horizontal image, but on a vertical one, it isn't going to look so great. So um, I definitely would want to change the size of that. Let me go back to why I picked my website. Many times when you post something on social media, which is a lot of times why we want to watermark our images, um, the image gets detached from the post. It can also get detached from your website. Pretty much anywhere you put an image out digitally, it can get detached from that source. And the source may have had your website information on it, but the detachment may only have like your name or your logo. And I believe that it's smart that any image that you publish online have your website on it because chances are you, you may even change your name, but you're not going to probably change your website address, oddly enough. So, um, and if your image gets detached and yes, people can go in and crop it out, but the average human out there isn't going to bother with that. They're just going to share it with your website attached. Figure if they're going to steal an image, they might as well be doing some advertising for me. All right, so let's go on and take a look at some other things that we can adjust here. So we've adjusted the font. We can adjust the alignment. I tend to like mine center. You can adjust the color. You can add a shadow underneath it. I really don't care for this shadow that's underneath there. It's a little bit, it's a little bit much. Um, so I can adjust that to where it's a little bit, uh, better for what I, I feel is, is a better thing. I can adjust the opacity of the watermark. Now I want you to notice this opacity up here was for the shadow. This is actually for the watermark itself. So if I wanted some of the image to show through, that's barely readable. I put them at a hundred percent. That's me. All right, and then proportional is what I want to choose, um, or actually I'm going to choose fit. And fit is going to give me um, where it fits here 
And then if I come here, it fills up the horizontal one. Do you see there that what fit does? Fill will just simply go huge. Proportional will size it proportionately, but I'm going to go ahead and pick on fit. And then I have insets for horizontal and vertical. I want to go ahead and add a little bit of an inset for the horizontal and a little inset for the vertical. So it just sets it up there. I picked four and four. And then if we look here, that's what it looks like on the horizontal one. This is what it looks like on the vertical one. I can anchor it on the bottom. Um, and, uh, and that pretty much is it. <laughs> so I have a basic watermark, right? I might want to switch it around, do something different with it. But for, for right now, it's something that would be functional. I could publish things. I could do do anything out into the world that I wanted to with that on it. You, um, you can come in here and fiddle with it and get it to go the way you want it to go. Once you get it where you want it, click on save, and then you're going to have to give it a name. Um, in this case, I'm going to do copyright Kim Beer Photography com. That way I know exactly what it is. And then when I export my images, I just make sure that that mark is checked and those images are going to have that watermark on it. The text watermark is great, but sometimes you have a logo that you may have paid a lot of money for, or you've gotten one of those photo logos and your, um, your watermark is a graphical watermark and you wanna be able to add that to your images in Lightroom. So to do that, we're gonna go back through about the same process, but there's some steps that you need to go through ahead of time before you start this process. And that is to get whatever image it is that you want to use into a PNG format with a transparent background. Now that's really important. It needs to be a PNG with a transparent background. Um, I believe a TIFF file would probably also work, but a PNG works really, really well. I already have a PNG file prepared for Cowgirls with Cameras, so I'm going to go ahead and use that as our example today. I'm going to grab, um, go to file, let's see, I'm going to use these same two images and I'll show you a different way to get to export. I used right click the last time, this time I'm going to use file and export. It's always good to know there's a hundred ways to do everything in, um, in any Adobe product. <laughs> so if you don't do it the way I do it, you're definitely not doing it wrong, you're just doing it differently. All right, we're gonna come back to the same place and click on edit watermarks, but this time we're gonna change it to graphic. So, um, and that's gonna open a dialog box here that allows us to choose the PNG. A correction, it will not take a TIFF, it will take a JPEG, but a JPEG is not gonna have a transparent background. So just keep that in mind. All right, I am going to head over here to this file and we're going to go name um, cowgirls with cameras and then I'm looking for a file called long cowgirl. There it is right there. I'm gonna go ahead and click on choose. So now my watermark is in here and you'll notice that the text options no longer matter <laughs> because there is no text, right? So I'm on the watermark effects. Now you can't have a graphic um, watermark and a text watermark at the same time. I guess I should mention that here. Okay, it's gonna retain whatever watermark I had chosen. It's gonna retain that particular watermarks information here. I'm gonna go ahead and click on proportional and I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. And then I'm gonna look at it on this particular image as well. Um, I'm gonna put it in center. Now, mind you, I would probably wanna go back and maybe add, actually, I probably wanna go back and make the whole thing white. Um, when it comes to watermarks, having a lot of contrast is really important to, to be able to make your watermark work well on different images. In this particular case, what I would probably do is I'd make a black one and a white one. And then I use my color labeling in Lightroom to designate if it is a black or a white logo for export. That way I can sort down to all of the 
um, images with a certain color label and run export and it will be white or run export and it'll be black. But the blue gets a little bit lost in here. It won't be as bad when it's exported, but for right now it's just not too hot. But it shows you how to put a graphical watermark on. Now for those of you who are going, but I want to be able to put my watermark over here or over here depending on the image, you're going to have to do that in Photoshop. Lightroom um, is unless you want to build uh, a watermark for each specific area of your image, um, Lightroom is just isn't going to do that. It needs repetitive tasks to be able to do. And repetitive tasks means it has to be done pretty much the same way every single time. So if you want to specifically add a watermark into very different areas on every single image that you send out into the world, then you're going to need to use Photoshop. And there's some great ways to do that with the brush tool. You can actually make a watermark stamp, which means that you can just click it and put it onto your image anywhere you want uh, and have it really available and handy for you. I'll have a Photoshop video at some point in the future that'll, care, that'll cover all of that. But for now, we're just talking about Lightroom and here is the graphical watermark and what it looks like. So you can go ahead and click on save and it's gonna ask you to give it a name. Um, and I always put it on the bottom. Sometimes I have images that go across the top. If you want one that kind of distorts the entire image, then you can you can change that to, to fit whatever it is that you want to fit. Like move it up and down, put it right in the center, make it big and obnoxious, or big and obnoxious with a little bit of transparency to it so people can see through it by adjusting the opacity. But that covers how to use watermarks in Lightroom. When you click on export, whatever images that you used will show up in wherever folder that you designated them to go to in the dialogue panel here with that particular um, watermark on them. And it will be a compressed um, file that uh, if you have chosen like a JPEG or a compressed file format, it'll be a compressed file with the watermark sitting there on the file itself. And you can use them on social media, wherever you want to be able to put them out into the world. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you've learned a little bit of something about how to put watermarks on your images using Lightroom um, and how, how you can utilize this particular skill to be able to get noticed and get found more often. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video.